On 5 News, Chet Evans is cleared. The former Wales footballer is found not guilty of raping a 19-year-old woman in a hotel room. Whilst my innocence has now been established, I wish to make it clear that I wholeheartedly apologise to anyone who might have been affected by, by the events of the night in question. So will the player now return to top flight football? Also, tragedy as a baby is mauled to death by the family dog. His older brother is critically ill in hospital. Anger as hospital parking charges rise again, in some places costing four times more than city centre car parks. I think it's really expensive and considering this, we are coming for hospital. I don't mind here to have bloods taken, you know, just to pay four pounds to park. It's disgusting. Oh, wow. Oh. Just how did this 30 stone gorilla escape from its cage at London Zoo? And... Eric and Ernie reunited as a new statue of them together for the first time is unveiled. Hello, welcome to Five News. I'm Matt Barbett. Footballer Chet Evans says he is overwhelmed with relief after being acquitted of raping a young woman in a hotel room. The 27-year-old spent two and a half years in jail after being convicted of the crime in 2012, but that was overturned, and at his retrial, jurors heard new evidence about the woman he was alleged to have attacked. The player wept as the verdict was delivered. He says the incident has changed his and others' lives forever. Catherine Jones reports. Leaving court, cleared of rape. Five years after Ched Evans was first accused, a jury took just two hours to decide the footballer was not guilty. In the early hours of the 30th of May 2011, an incident occurred in North Wales that was to change my life and the lives of others forever. That incident did not involve the commission of a criminal offence. And today I am overwhelmed with relief that the jury agreed. Thanks go too to my friends and family, most notably my fiancée Natasha, who chose, perhaps incredibly, to support me in my darkest hour. Whilst my innocence has now been established, I wish to make it clear that I wholeheartedly apologise to anyone who might have been affected by, by the events of the night in question. The striker was accused of attacking a 19-year-old woman in a hotel room in Rill in 2011. CCTV played in court showed Mr Evans leaving the hotel through a fire exit. He denied the teenager was too drunk to consent and had insisted their sex was consensual. But at a trial in 2012, Mr Evans was jailed for five years. At the time of his conviction, he'd been playing for Sheffield United. On his release, two and a half years later, he recorded a message asking for his job back. Now that I've served the custodial part of my sentence of two and a half years, it is my hope that I'll be able to return to football. But when the club let him train with them, there was a fierce backlash, with 160,000 people signing a petition against his return. Following a well-funded campaign that included the offer of a £50,000 reward for information leading to his acquittal, in April this year, the Court of Appeal quashed Ched Evans' conviction and ordered a retrial. The 27-year-old is already back playing professional football. Now, Ched Evans has won his five-year-long battle to clear his name. Catherine Jones, 5 News. A baby boy has been mauled to death by a dog at a house in Essex. The boy's brother, who is nearly two, suffered life-changing injuries. His mother is now by his side in hospital after she was also treated for injuries that she sustained. Dominic Reynolds reports from Colchester. Beyond the police tape, there's hardly any sign of what happened inside. But yesterday afternoon, the unthinkable happened here to a young family. A four-month-old baby boy was killed and a toddler badly injured. They were attacked by a dog. This is a tragic incident where a young child has lost his life. I can confirm the incident took place inside a house on Harwich Road yesterday. The dog, which has now been destroyed, is, to be is believed to be a Staffordshire Bull Terrier type dog. It's tragic for parents. Roger lives a few doors down from the family. He describes everything happening very quickly once the police arrived. The police had to smash the front door in 
although they tried to get in touch with a little child upstairs to open the door, uh, which I presume it must have been the 22-month-old child, and he, he couldn't, and of course his mother was in the bath or in bathroom, so what they had to do, smash the door open. Forensics officers arrived after dark last night, and police have confirmed the dog responsible was put down not long afterwards. As the activity continued today, police said specially trained officers were supporting the family. The mother has minor injuries. She's at her surviving son's bedside in hospital. Neighbours have told us they hadn't heard much from the family here. They hadn't lived here for long. But yesterday afternoon, three ambulances and an air ambulance was sent here. The 22-month-old surviving boy is said to have injuries that are life-changing. It comes just eight weeks after a similar incident in Essex just a few miles away. Three-year-old Dexter Neal was killed by an American bulldog and a woman was arrested. In Colchester, hanging in the family's window, a message wishing them happiness in their new home. And in front, flowers and toys from a community which hardly had time to get to know them before tragedy struck. Dominic Reynolds, 5 News in Colchester. A new inquest is to take place into the death of a young soldier at Deep Cut Barracks 21 years ago. Private Sean Benton was found with five bullet wounds to his chest. The original coroner recorded a verdict of suicide. This morning, a judge at the High Court said new evidence had come to light that cast some doubt on that decision. The governor of the Bank of England has warned that the prices in our shops are about to go up and that the poor and the vulnerable will be hit the hardest. Mark Carney says inflation will rise in the coming months because of the plummeting value of the pound. For anyone visiting a friend or a relative in hospital, the cost of parking can often add to the stress and it seems it is getting more expensive. New research has found that a third of hospitals in England have increased their prices in the past year, with one charging up to £4 for just an hour. Simon Viger has more. When you visit a hospital, the last thing you're worrying about is parking tariffs. But here at the Royal Surrey County Hospital in Guildford, you need to come prepared. The minimum price has gone up again, so even for half an hour, it's £4. England's priciest hospital car park is not popular. I think it's really expensive and considering this we are coming for hospital, nobody comes here for play or anything. We're not only here to have blood taken, you know, just to pay £4 to park. It's disgusting. I'm just here to have a scan, it should only take half an hour but I have to pay for two hours parking and I'm actually short as well so um, I might possibly be late for my appointment now because I don't carry that much change with me usually. Ridiculous. Mm. I mean I, I personally, I may have to pick my wife up, yeah but I'm, I mean I'll just pay £4 for two hours where I'm going to spend about 15 minutes, but I've got to do it. It's gone up since last week. We were over here last week and it's gone up. It was 3 50 then. What do you think about the £4 then minimum? Well, I think it's terrible, don't you? As with many hospitals, but not all of them, there is a concessionary scheme here for cancer patients and blue badge holders park for free. The national figures have been put together following a Freedom of Information request. For one hour of parking, you'll pay £4 at the Royal Surrey County Hospital, £3.50 at Hereford County Hospital, the same at Stepping Hill Hospital in Stockport, it's £3.40 at the Bristol Royal Infirmary and £3.30 at West Suffolk Hospital. The hospitals say budgets are tight and they have no choice. In Guildford, they insist money will go back into improving the car parks. In a statement, the Royal Surrey County Hospital says it's been told by patients that its current car parking provisions are inadequate and urgent changes need to be made. It says the Trust does not have the additional funds to invest in the future of its car parking facilities without making the incredibly difficult decision to charge people for using the car parks. The bottom line is it's the patients and their friends and family who are stumping up. You've got to rush out and pay more. You get out, you find people in yellow coats have put a ticket on your car because you've forgotten and only did two hours. It's just one further stress at a time when you've got enough stress and anxiety to deal with in any case. Hitting people at their lowest ebb with high charges is never going to be popular and there is no chance of it ending any time soon. Simon Viger, 5 News, Guildford.
The UK looks like it's about to step off a cliff and it wouldn't be right to let Scotland go with it. That was the message from the First Minister Nicola Sturgeon as she outlined the possibility of a second independence referendum. The SNP leader told us she's not bluffing on the new vote. She really is worried about leaving the single market. She's been talking to our political editor Andy Bell. Independence is what quickens the pulse with the SNP and the Europe vote has put that back on the agenda. The leader is saying that if Scotland doesn't get real control over its own borders, over trade policy, then she will go for a second independence referendum. So when I spoke to Nicola Sturgeon today, I asked her if that amounted to a threat. It's not a threat, but as First Minister of Scotland, I look at a situation just now where the UK looks as if it's about to take a step off a cliff by coming out of the single market. I look at research, independent research in Scotland, that says that's going to cost 80,000 jobs in the Scottish economy. It's going to hit real wages by you know, perhaps £2,000. It's going to slow our economic growth. It's going to hit our exports. And I can't just shrug my shoulders and accept the inevitability of that. But given where we are, aren't you setting the bar so high that it's going to be impossible for the UK government to meet it? And and therefore, independence is, is the inevitable conclusion. Independence may be the conclusion, but I don't think I'm setting the bar high. I don't think Theresa man uh, May's got a mandate to take the UK out of the single market. And I heard Tories, Labour politicians, Liberals say the same thing in the House of Commons the other day. But even after Brexit, the evidence, the polls, don't show Scots eager for a second independence referendum. Terrible idea. Why is that? I don't Democracy? want independence. They've had your vote. They've had it? Yeah. OK. But hasn't Europe changed anything, the vote on Europe? Not for me, no. no. Scotland should have their own say, and we're just kind of being dragged down with England. Yeah, it's so. like whatever we decide, yeah. it never gets taken into consideration yeah. because we're smaller. It was supposed to be the vote for a sort of generation the last time around, but you think the time's come again? Yeah, but it was also supposed to be a vote to stay in Europe the last time around. Another one? No. Why not? Don't want it. Don't want it? Don't want it. Talking of mandates, um, we've been talking to people, and the evidence is there is no driving will at the moment for people in Scotland to have another independence referendum. There, there isn't that will, is there, out there? Well, I think there's a lot of concern in Scotland about what lies ahead as a result of Brexit. I had a poll yesterday that showed that if uh, there was a, a hard Brexit uh, on the table, then 55% of people in Scotland would want to have another uh, uh, choice over independence. There are plenty of people in London who think this is all a big bluff and you're trying to get some more powers, and at the end of the day, there isn't the support in Scotland for another referendum. Well, yeah, I just think that's nonsense. This is not some kind of game of chicken. It's not a game of dare. It's not a game at all, actually. It's just two years since they were disappointed by Scotland's no to independence. Is the Europe vote now going to give them a chance to change that to a yes? Andy Bell, 5 News, Glasgow. Still to come on the programme. Are your kids fussy eaters? We'll tell you why it doesn't make you a bad parent. And... <laughs> Still bringing the sunshine, whatever the weather. Celebrating Morecambe and Wise 75 years after their first show. All that and more coming up after the break. Welcome back, you're watching 5 News. London Zoo is investigating how a 29-stone gorilla escaped from its enclosure. Visitors had to be shut inside buildings and even a bird sanctuary while armed police helped staff track the animal down yesterday afternoon. Today, the zoo was back open, with bosses describing it as a minor incident. Leila Hayes has more. A 29-stone male gorilla bangs on the glass. Just minutes after this was filmed, Kambuka broke out of his enclosure and London Zoo was put into lockdown. Visitors were told to stay inside enclosures while a search was carried out. This footage from inside a cafe shows armed police who were called to help. It was like being in Jurassic Park, very exciting. Charlotte Neild and Hannah Donoghue Hobbs were inside the zoo at the time and took shelter in a cafe. Today, they said it was nerve wracking. I felt OK because I felt like the staff had it under control, like we were, we were safe. But it was a bit when they said, come away from the glass, like the stuff away from the windows and you could hear like they were getting more panicky. I was like, oh, God, it is real. Yeah. Like, and you don't, you didn't, we didn't work sure what animal it was. But then yeah. people saying gorilla, if it can get out of there, it can get in this <laughs> tiny cafe. 
So yeah, it was a bit panicky. I think it's the uncertainty of you yeah. don't actually know what's happening. It's really... That's a little bit scary. It's thought Kambuka may have escaped after a cage door was left open. Staff at the zoo say he had to be tranquilised, but is now doing well. The male gorilla was actually in a secure keeper area, so at no time were the visitors in any danger. It was the end of the day and there were only about 100 or so visitors still in the zoo. Today was business as usual, but some visitors had their doubts. It's obviously quite worrying, especially with the little one as well, but um, no, I think the zoo wouldn't open if, um, if it wasn't safe for us to come in, so yeah, no, I'm quite confident. Quite frightening. Yeah, it's just, it's just wild, isn't it? You know, animals escaping, you know, it makes you, makes you wonder about the security of the, the zoo, isn't it? You know, what else could jump out? Staff say Kambuka is now safely back in his enclosure and they want to reassure the public that this won't happen again. Leila Hayes, 5 News. Now, some more monkey business. If you're a parent, you may know the pain of bringing up a fussy eater. Well, scientists have brought some consolation, sort of. A study involving nearly 2,000 sets of toddler twins has found that aversion to new foods is as likely caused by their genes as how they're raised. The other welcome news is their behaviour can be changed. Ruth Sliptrop, a mum of two, has the story. Oh, he's going for it. He's going to eat that piece of satsuma. No, he's not having it. <laughs> she doesn't look like she's enjoying it either. According to new research, though, if your kid's a fussy eater, it could be genetic. Scientists at University College London looked at sets of toddler twins, identical and non-identical. Identical twins who share all the same genes were found to have eating behaviours, like picky eating, that were much more similar. We understand now that food fussiness is an innate trait, um, but parents are usually blamed for fussy eating behaviours. So if parents understand that this is more an innate trait, they can use this opportunity to work with their child. Of course, children can be ingenious when it comes to getting out of eating something they don't like, even if it means making us eat it instead. Yes, that blueberry has been in a mouth already. And so has that fork. See, that's what you call making a meal of it. Most of us, as parents, have been in a situation where we really want our kids to eat something like this, but instead they'd rather eat something like this. So it's going to come as a big relief to know that that's not necessarily our fault. He only really eats toast and yogurt. Toast and yogurt? Yeah. Together or separately? No, separately. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel about this research then that says that that's, it, it could be genetic rather than something that you've done wrong? Well, it does make you feel a little bit better because obviously as a mother you blame yourself for everything. It is a relief. It is a relief for, uh, for many parents like me. Uh, so we don't have to blame ourselves anymore. But the findings don't let us off the hook completely. The scientists are keen to add that even if our children are inherently fussy eaters, they still need to be eating a healthy diet. And if you keep offering that satsuma and offering it again, eventually they might just eat it. No, it's come out again. Ruth Liptrot, 5 News. And it's no one else's fault. Now, they've brought sunshine and laughter to the lives of millions. And to mark the 75th anniversary of their first performance as a double act, Morecambe and Wise have been immortalised in bronze in Blackpool. The statue is the first of the two of them together, and it's in the town that became their spiritual home. Peter Lane was there to see it unveiled. Curtain up for the double act, starting a permanent residency at their spiritual home here in Blackpool. Eric and Ernie, Morecambe and Wise, a bronze statue of the comedy legends unveiled by Eric's wife and children. Bring me sunshine in your smile. With their signature song and so much more, they were a TV institution. Their highest rating, 28 million viewers for a Christmas special. But they found fame on the stage performing here in Blackpool more than a thousand times. So in the theatre just yards from the new statue, I asked the Morecams, what do you think of it so far? It's so lifelike. It is, people were looking at it and just smiling. It just makes you feel good. 
Uh, it, yeah, very special. It's hard to portray how special it feels. And in terms of the location, it is absolutely mm. perfect yes. because that's yes. where they did most of their work, uh, mm. theatrical work particularly, you know, the, the shows. But it's great, isn't it, to be able to say that, yeah. to be able to say that, well, this was the perfect spot. Let's face the music and dance. This classic routine saw Angela Rippon break out from behind the news desk to team up with the pair, and today she said their statue is spot on. Look at the expressions that they've managed to capture on their faces. I think it captures that feeling that, you know, it wasn't just Eric and Ern, you know, the little one with hairy legs and the one with the glasses who made you all laugh. Um, they were great mates, and I think that captures just that feeling about them, just uh, how close they were together. 75 years after they first performed together as a double act, this is a fitting tribute. <laughs> Morecambe and Wise gave us timeless comedy, family-friendly entertainment, sometimes without even saying a word. A tough act to follow. Peter Lane, 5 News. Just doesn't diminish. Still very, very funny. Look, before we go, a quick look at what's coming up on 5 News tonight at 6.30. We're going to be discussing that issue of children being fussy eaters. My two are. Does your child there refuse to eat certain things? Does it matter if they do? I'll be joined by food experts Kira Atwell and Annabelle Carmel. Plus, you've just seen her dancing with those TV legends, Morecambe and Wise. I've been chatting to Angela Rippon here in the studio about well, doing that famous bit of dancing with them. But that's it for the time being. Sean Welby is here with you weather next. I'll see you again, of course, at 6.30. Thanks for your company. Bye-bye.